Hey everyone, Dev here. And in this video, we'll be taking a look at a few devices for your retro console setups. The RetroTank 2X and the 2X Scar from Mike Chi. We'll also be taking a look at the XRGB Mini, also known as the Frame Meister. I'm gonna give a quick overview of them and then do a side-by-side -side visual comparison of the Frame Meister and the 2X SCART. Rise from your grave. So here are our devices, the Frame Meister and the two Retro Tanks. The Retro Tank 2X is a nice little device with inputs for component, S-video, composite, and you've got the audio inputs on the side. The output is handled via mini HDMI with power handled by a micro USB, which will accept five volt power. There are also two buttons on the side. One is for output switching and the other is to switch between the filtering modes, pass through, 2X scaling, also known as line doubling, and scaling with a smoothing filter. The 2X SCART only accepts RGB SCART and outputs via full-size HDMI. Again, the power is handled via micro USB 5 volt, and the button here handles the filtering. And there are five modes on this bad boy. Pass-through, pass-through smooth, 2X scaling, and a 2X smooth, along with the scanline filter. Now, the XRGB Mini Frame Meister has a whole lot going on. In the front, we've got your RGB input, some status lights, and an AV spot which accepts composite and S-video. On the back we have 5 volt power, mini USB, two HDMI inputs, and a D-terminal input which will accept component. And we have your HDMI out right here. There's also an SD card slot which will allow for firmware updates, along with being able to load profiles for various custom settings. I won't get into that vast menu in this video, but I'll have a link in the description for Firebrand X's custom profiles for the various retro console settings out there. As for price, the 2X is around $90 US, and I got the 2X card for $95. Now as for the Frame Meister, it will run you between a whopping $300 to $400. I got this one used on eBay for $300, so I would definitely suggest looking there if you're in the market. Now just remember, the Frame Meister is an all-out upscaler all the way up to 1080p60. The Retro Tanks are simply line doublers, and much of my use case is for taking a 240p signal and bumping that up to 480p quality. It also helps to deinterlace 480i video, and also some games utilize both 240p and 480i and the transition can be delayed by your TV's native upscaler and even the frame meister, sometimes taking several seconds to grab the signal again, whereas the retro tanks don't have that issue. I'll exhibit this issue later on in the video. But there you have it. Three devices to handle your retro console needs, whether you're using them on a modern TV or monitor, or streaming and capture cards. So without further ado, let's check out the footage. So I chose Burning Rangers for a couple of reasons. One is that it has a 480i to 240p transition like I was mentioning earlier. And two, because there's a mix of pixelated graphics and some nice animated art. So we're gonna start off with the Frame Meister comparison here at the intro screen. Check out this no signal screen I'm receiving from my capture card. This is an issue with upscalers such as the Frame Meister when transitioning between 240p and 480i, which is also known as the Chrono Cross problem. Many games from this era would use 480i in the menus, then 240p for gameplay. Pay attention to this segment when I run it through the retro tank, and you'll see it's a non-issue. I'm gonna run this back now and you'll see that the transition takes the Frame Meister a little over 3 seconds to get its bearings. Yeah. 
Side-by-side side shows the Frame Meister a bit washed out here, but saturation can be fixed in the menu. The biggest difference here is going to be the aspect ratio. We see that the Frame Meister is much closer to that native 4-3 aspect ratio than the Retro Tank. Here we'll take a look at the various filtering options, starting with the straight pass-through. This is taking the 240p signal and passing through 240p. Now with a smoothing filter applied. The 2x scaling option is my personal favorite, as I am a fan of the sharp edges. Now with a smoothing filter. And finally the scanline filter, which unfortunately many times doesn't record well. And now a side-by-side -side comparison of all five. I've zoomed in on the text to get a closer look at the differences between the scaling options. Taking a look at pass-through and 2x scaling, we see jagged lines on the bottom right of the 8. The smoothing features on both put a sort of anti-aliasing filter on it. The scanline filter does a nice job of emulating the look in my opinion. This is actually one of those times it looks good on recording and closer to what you would experience in person. Now I want to take a look at the character model. Most notably the shadow it shows feet. 
The pass-through does a lot better at transparencies, but when we scale up, a dithering effect appears. The 2x smooth makes the dithering appear as angled lines, and the scanline filter seemingly applies to the regular 2x scaling. I'm gonna finish this one off with a side by side of the Frame Meister and the RetroTink, along with their scanline options. These are the settings most similar to each other. As you can see, neither have a smoothing filter and both exhibit similar dithering patterns. The Frame Meister scanlines here appear to be spread out in groups, with the RetroTink appearing more uniform. Again, this is more of a recording issue here, and I believe they look better in person, but I will say the RetroTink scanlines are better than the Frame Meisters, in my opinion. Also for the Frame Meister settings, I'm using Firebrand X's profile for the Sega Saturn at 240p 5x scaled. I'll put a link in the description below which will have all of the custom profiles that he made for the Retro Tank. Well, that'll do it for this one. Thanks for stopping by and checking it out. Also, let me know in the comments what looks best to you. And don't forget to like and subscribe. This is Digital Dev signing off, and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace. Oh,